Hello and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Tyler Reed. I am the Manufacturing Application Manager here at Go Engineer, And today we're going to be talking about one of the features that's included in the brand new SolidWorks CAM product called Tolerance Based Machining or TBM for short. This webinar is being broadcast live. That means you can hear me, but I cannot hear you. I do want to answer all of the questions you might have. So at any point during this webinar, go ahead and type a question into the questions box or the chat window, and we will address them as they come up. Tolerance-based machining, what is it? If you are a CNC programmer or you're an engineer or a designer or anybody working within a SOLIDWORKS file, you may have come across a part file that looks like this. It has the part geometry, but it also has some tolerances in there and dimensions and whatnot. If you're the CNC programmer or the machinist, these are critical points of information uh, for creating this part accurately so that it's going to pass the QA inspection. Oftentimes, we are changing the machining strategy or the actual pocket size, feature size based on this data. Our whole goal as a machinist is to develop and create and manufacture a part that is going to meet the demands of the tolerances set forth by the engineer or the designer. Now, historically, this has been a little bit of a pain when we are working with an integrated CAM tool like CAMWorks or SOLIDWORKS CAM, where we're designing and shaping tool paths based on the part geometry. Now, with tolerance-based machining within SOLIDWORKS CAM, we're going to be able to anticipate any sort of hardship and actually automate our machining strategies and our allowances and, and whatnot based on the tolerance data and not on the part geometry. So that's what TBM is all about. If you have been using CAMWorks in the past or if you're new to SOLIDWORKS CAM, we are going to have to go over a couple key points here. SOLIDWORKS CAM is based on intelligent knowledge-based machining strategies. The idea is that SOLIDWORKS CAM is going to identify machinable features and it is also going to suggest machining strategies. So as an example, if you have a hole and the hole is a tight tolerance hole, say it's plus or minus 1,000, that's going to shape how you machine that part. You're probably not going to just drill it out, but you might bore it or ream it. Now in the past, before TBM existed, selecting a strategy was on the the burden was on the machinist. But now with TBM, it will actually take into account that data and suggest an appropriate strategy for you. It will look at tolerance data coming from standard SOLIDWORKS dimensions, DIM expert dimensions like you saw in that previous window, and also SOLIDWORKS MBD data. The tolerances are driving the machining decisions. We do see symmetric linear tolerances, and we also see asymmetric linear tolerances. When we come across asymmetric tolerances, CAMWorks and SOLIDWORKS CAM will actually adjust the machining allowance on the wall to machine to the mean. This is going to give you the best chance of producing a part that's going to pass the QA inspection. When it comes to three axis surfaces, TBM will also take into account surface finish callouts. Now there are a wide variety of GD&T callouts that TBM can't yet uh, account for, but this is a growing product and it's one that's being developed actively alongside the rest of the SOLIDWORKS CAM tool. So this is a great start. I am saying that this is included in SOLIDWORKS CAM. It's also included in CAMWORKS. There is no additional charge for TBM. It's just a built-in feature that's going to make programming much easier. Now we're going to jump into SOLIDWORKS and show you how this works in action. It is dead simple to use. If you've been using CAMWORKS uh, for even a, a couple days, then this is going to be uh, just zero 
training required. If you're new to SolidWorks CAM and you are using DIM Expert or Tolerance Dimensions, then this is going to be the preferred method going forward for producing your parts. So real quick, here's an example of a part with standard just dimensions and tolerances, non-DIM expert tolerances. SolidWorks CAM TBM will work on something like this. I'm going to run it on an identical part using DIM expert tolerances to start with. I prefer the DIM expert tolerances because they're easier to edit. We can also get more precise tolerances. We can also start doing some GD and T tolerances and surface finish data. So this is an example part. We'll kind of go over the features. We have a bunch of holes, really circular pockets based on the size. This particular hole that I have highlighted is just over two and a half inches diameter. On this smaller side, we're at almost an inch diameter. Notice we have some pockets here. Some of the pockets have symmetric tolerances. This one is plus or minus 10 thousandths. And asymmetric tolerances. This one has a tolerance window of plus 2 thousandths and minus 5 thousandths. When it comes to counter sunk holes, we have tolerances on the OD of the countersink, we have tolerances on the through hole, we have tolerances on the depth of the countersink, and also the angle of the countersink. Currently, TBM won't account for all of those. It will account for the diameter of the through hole. We also have some counterboard holes that, again, have many tolerances. It's going to account for the tolerances on the diameter of the through hole and the diameter of the counterboard. So when we jump over to SolidWorks CAM or CAMWorks, we're gonna see a simple window, simple toolbar. Generally, we would run feature recognition, but when we're running TBM, it's the exact same feature recognition technology, it's just a slightly different user interface. The user interface gives us a few extra options we're not used to seeing. We have, for example, I have highlighted the whole feature. There's a default strategy that's just drill it alone. But there's also three tolerance-based strategies. Those are listed down here in this window. The tolerance-based strategies are based on the tolerance windows. So for a window between zero and two thousandths, it's going to pick a bore strategy. For a window between two and two thousandths and twenty thousandths, it's going to pick a ream strategy. And if it's above 20 thousandths, it will use the drill strategy. If it finds a feature without any tolerance data, then it will just use the default strategy, which is drill. Okay. For some of these other strategies, say rectangular pocket, the default is rough, rough rest finish. So that's a two pass rough with two different size tools and then a finish pass. That's also the strategy that's selected for the tight tolerance condition and the loose tolerance condition is just a single rough and a finish. Now these tolerance windows are editable and we can add more conditions, we can remove conditions. This window is completely up to our control. At this point, if I am happy with my conditions, if I'm just going to use the default conditions or if I've already taken the time to create my own conditions, I simply hit OK and it's going to run through several steps in the SOLIDWORKS CAM workflow. It's going to run the automatic feature recognition that's going to identify two and a half axis machinable features. And then it's going to generate an operation plan. What that means is it's going to take the features that it found, it's going to take the different parameters of those features, you know, things like the height, or the depth, the overall width, the feature type, the shape, and also that tolerance window, run it through what's called the technology database until there is a matching entry found. And then that matching entry will tell the user how it plans to machine that feature. It's gonna create operations out of that step. Then those operations are gonna be sorted and then the tool paths are gonna be generated. 
okay? So it's gonna do all of that for us within one click. And the idea here is that our machining, our time to program the part should go down. The time to fine tune the program will go down as we use the software and as we teach SolidWorks CAM how we're using the software. Mistakes will be reduced, scrap will be reduced, tool life will go up because we're using consistent known tool pass strategies that we have approved for our parts on our machines. So within one click, it's kicked us over to this next tab. We have all of our center drills, all of our drilling operations, okay? Then we have our counter sinks for the counterboard holes to chamfer those edges. Then we have a bore cycle on these parts and a ream cycle on that part. Okay. If I scoot back one window, notice it found all of these features. It found that as a whole, and it picked up that it's going to ream it out based on the tolerance range that we have, which is a total tolerance range of 10 thousandths. This group of holes it found, it chose a bore cycle based on a tolerance range of 2 thousandths, which we see here, plus or minus 1 thousandth. Then we have our counterboard hole group and our countersunk hole group. Then we have some pockets. These pockets were selected with a rough finish strategy because they're relatively loose tolerances. This pocket with the tighter tolerance of plus or minus one thousandth, it was selected a rough, rough rest strategy, so a two pass rough cycle. Now it's circular, so we might not need that. And that might be a fine tuning we might do within our TBM menu. In our TBM menu, for circular pockets, it might not, it might not make sense to have a rough, <coughs> rough, rough rest finish option as the default. So I could go ahead and edit that. Would not be a problem to do that. Moving down farther, we have some rectangular pockets and some of these have symmetric tolerances like this one, and some of them have asymmetric tolerances. So how did TBM handle that? Well, if we see the finish pass on these pockets down here, we see the tolerance mean listed. It's a negative 1.3 thousandth. So what it's actually done is it hasn't machined this pocket to the nominal size. It has actually oversized it by just over a thousandth on all around it because we have a tolerance window of plus ten thousandths and minus five thousandths. What it's doing is it's machining to the mean. It's machining to the spot that's going to give you the best percentage chance of it coming out within spec. And it's calculated that for you. Now without TBM you would see an allowance of zero and it would be machining to the CAD file. Now in this case, that's gonna, that would probably be fine, but in cases where the tolerances are very tight, that's really not what you wanna do. You don't wanna machine to the CAD data, you wanna machine to the tolerance data. And that's what TBM automates. When it comes to three axis surfaces, like you see here, with surface finish callout data, SOLIDWORKS CAM TBM will handle this as well. It works the exact same way as we just saw. We are going to enter the tolerance-based machining window. We are going to hit OK, and it's going to go through the same steps of identifying machinable features. When it sees surfaces with surface finish callout, it creates a feature for those surfaces. So typically, surfaces are not found in the feature recognition. But with TBM activated, if the surface has a surface finish callout, it will create a feature. Now in this case, we have three surface finish callouts and we have three separate features. Each of those features has a different strategy selected. For the surface finish between 10 and 50 RMS, it's created what's called a fine strategy. For 50 to 100, it did a 
pattern project strategy. And for 100 to 160 range, it did a course strategy. So again, these are the default options. This is totally customizable. You can use it however you like in your shop. But the great thing is, is that in all reality, we probably are going to machine those surfaces differently. So let's allow SolidWorks Cam and CamWorks to keep track of how we are machining these surfaces and automatically recall those and identify those uh, for us. As I was mentioning, there are some limitations to SolidWorks Cam TBM right now. Some of these are on the roadmap to handle. Uh, depth parameters we currently don't handle. Uh, more GD and T like and geometry like uh, tolerances like parallelism, concentricity, roundness, flatness. Uh, we don't do anything with those currently, but we do have the groundwork for handling those. SolidWorks Cam and CamWorks are the best suited tools to handle this sort of data. We have the most robust feature recognition to identify those features in the first place. And we have the most elaborate knowledge-based machining strategies. You know, The idea of having a database, either an SQL or an access database in the background, keeping track of how we machine parts, that gives us the mechanism to handle these different situations automatically. So as you can see, if you're a longtime user, this is going to be very easy to use. It's just a matter of clicking a different button. This was a short and quick webinar. Uh, there really isn't a lot to talk about as far as using TBM. The most difficult part is probably going to be learning how to use the DIM Expert tool within SolidWorks, which is, again, not that difficult. It's just accessing the area selecting types of tolerances and then inputting our tolerance data in we just have to get in the habit of doing it inputting pmi data or manufacturing data into the 3d cad file is something we're doing more and more of within the solidworks environment the industry is moving away from 2d drawings and instead using 3d cad models with all of the manufacturing data it only makes sense that the CAM users should and do need this data and be able to handle and make decisions based off this data. So SolidWorks CAM is the best tool around to handle this and hopefully we'll get more and more people using it. So I wanna thank you guys for joining this webinar. If you have any questions, you can shoot me an email at tread.goengineer.com. Will be up on our YouTube page alongside many other SolidWorks CAM videos uh, coming up over the next couple months as the product is released. So, I want to thank you guys for joining, and I'll catch you next time. Mm -hmm.